you all know why you clicked on it. Reinforced masonry beam design, including maximum steel reinforcement ratio checks and minimum steel reinforcement ratio checks per the TMS 402602. If this is your first time here, welcome. We do all things structural engineering, trying to advance our careers and our own knowledge of the built environment around us. If that sounds good to you, subscribe down below. Totally free, you know the drill. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so CMU reinforced beam design. Um, we have a simply supported beam that you can see there, a uh, simple elevation view. I have the self weight of the beam denoted in green that we need to calculate. And then we have two point loads at uh, that are two and a half feet from the edge of the beam. That's actually gonna be down to the uh, center line of the support. And that's the same on both sides. And you have a little AA cross section right there showing all the rebar in it. And basically uh, we have our um, design CMU properties over to the left, and we just need to determine, hey, is this beam adequate under the loading provided? So let's figure that out. Well, first of all, let's determine, we'll go green, what W is, the self weight of the beam. Well, we see right here, 69 PSF for the self weight of the beam, beam's 48 inches deep, W is gonna equal 276 PLF. We today, I'm gonna to switch back to red, are gonna be designing this whole thing per strength design, SD. So in masonry design, you have two paths forward. You can either do allowable stress design, ASD, or you can do strength design, um, or which, that's in tandem with like LRFD. Um, so strength design, you are going through procedures and using equations to determine if the member, the column, the whatever has adequate strength to uh, resist the total load on that member. Whereas for ASD, um, slightly different equations and you're determining if the stresses induced by the forces on the member are less than the allowable stresses from the material properties that you're designing with. Two different systems should get you relatively the same thing. Concrete, uh, we all know that we need to do LRFD strength design. Wood, you can switch between both. Steel, you can switch between both. CMU, you can also switch between both. But today, long story short, we're doing strength design. First thing we're gonna do is get our moments and I'm gonna split them up between the moment induced by the self weight and the moment induced by the live loads. MU dead load is equal to WL squared over eight. That gets us 4.97 kip feet and then MU live load. Um, I pulled the equation from the AISC steel manual um, in the kind of the load tables that they provide there where you have a point load two symmetric point loads symmetrically placed on a simply supported beam. That's what we have. So that gets you a live load of just 20 or your P times the distance to your simple support, which is 2.5 feet. And then since we're doing strength design, we know that we need to factor our loads. And for masonry, it's 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. That spits out, we'll call it a sum. <laughs> A beautiful summation, a summation, oh my God. A sum, summation of a moment, ultimate, equal to, we're gonna round off 86 kip feet. There's our demand right there. Next, for strength design, you now need to find your A. Just like in concrete, when you have your cross section and you have your steel down below here, and then you have your compressive zone up above, denoted some A, your FY, AS for your tension, and then your compression and all of that jazz, and you have your stress, stress and your strain. Same exact thing, just slightly different uh, variables for your properties. Um, because CMU is just slightly different than concrete, but it is the same background. So A is equal to ASFY over 0 0.8, so there's one change there, B times F prime M. So concrete for all of you who may be jumping in here for your first time, you have F prime C, that's the compressive strength of the uh, concrete, F prime C, C for concrete. Um, we have F prime M, M for masonry. That's really the big difference there. And then we don't get that 0 0.85, we get 0 0.8, so slightly less there, but everything else is the same. And we know from up above that uh, we have all the variables that we need. AS, we have two number sixes, so we're just looking at the bottom, if I come over here, only the bottom reinforcing steel. I know we have some up top in the compressive zone, but we're gonna ignore that as it was up above, it was two number sixes. I got my 
Chrissy student detailing sheet, still use this thing to this day. Look down, two number sixes or one number six is 0.44 inches squared. We have two of them, so AS is 0.88. This is regular rebar, so 60 KSI steel. Um, B, it said above that we have eight inch masonry block, but you need to kind of pump the brakes there. Masonry again is a little funky. Um, so I'm gonna scroll up to the top here. I'll go blue, although you might think, well, this is B, let's start there. You might think, oh, eight inches, boom, let's move on. Uh, unfortunately, not quite as I'm jumping all over the place. It's actually uh, seven and five eighths inches for an eight inch block. So it's just kind of like wood a little bit where you have like a two by four, but that's actually one and a half by three and a half inches. Masonry, same thing. You have six, four inch, six inch, eight inch. Uh, I think you have 10 inch, 12 inch, but they're not exactly those dimensions. And you're gonna want to take the slim down dimension because you can't account for that little itty bitty extra. Um, you wanna make sure you're using what is actually there for section properties. So unfortunately, seven and five eighths, that actually comes out to 7.625. And F prime M, 1500 PSI, let's keep it. Uh, you want to make sure you keep FY and F prime M uh, equal terms or equal uh, freaking units, if I can remember. So we'll go 1.5 KSI. You can go the opposite direction, just keep them the same. All that plugged in gets you the following. 5.77 inches, lovely. Next, just like we would for concrete, now let's find M sub N. Let's try to find the moment capacity of our member. That's what the following equation looks identical to concrete. And what's funny is uh, you will notice when you do uh, ASD design procedures, these equations vary slightly. Your properties of your steel and your masonry and all that kind of stuff, that changes as well. There's factors applied to that, but your load combos are different as well. There are no load combos and it's the same approach, but, but different and from a numbers perspective and equations perspective, it can look incredibly different. So don't panic if you're skimming online and you're trying to find that question to the homework problem or whatever. Um, and you see some procedure that is way, way, way different than you thought you were looking for. You just need to pay attention that there's two different procedures and they are different from one another. Let's keep going. D, um, this is the effective depth down to our flexural rebar, which was up above, but I'll just draw it here, 45 inches, full depth of 48 inches, so D, that was easy. A, S, F, Y, we have from above, A, we solved. So let's plug all that in. M, N equals 185.3 kip feet. And unfortunately, I don't have an electronic version of the TMS, but here it is right here. Um, next, you would need to find your fee for flexure, and that's in TMS, here, I'll write it down. Well, it's 0 0.9 for flexure, and that is TMS 402. 602 2016 edition 9.1.4.4 that's where you get that sucker from and uh chapter eight i believe is the allowable stress design procedures and then chapter nine is the strength design procedures and uh you don't have any fee factors in allowable stress design but you do in strength design again that back and forth that ping pong but we've talked about it so i'll, I'll get over myself and move on um you know what to do from here, phi mn equals those two combined, which gets you 166.7 kip feet. Beautiful. All right, well, we've determined the capacity of the uh, masonry beam, but now let's check for minimum steel reinforcement and maximum steel reinforcement, make sure we're, we're within um, code guidelines because that's another huge thing. It's not just about strength. There's also all these other parameters that go along to make sure that we are designing safe, efficient structures. And of course I have the TMS out again, but uh, this is per 9.3.4. 0.2, 0.2, 0.2. All right, we freaking get it. MN, which we solved for, must be greater than or equal to 1.3 times MCR. MCR being the nominal cracking moment of the beam. And now you're like, well, what's MCR? Well, hang on a second, jeez Louise. Uh, MCR is equal, very simply, FR, SN. And FR is the modulus of rupture. And FR can be found in 9.1.9. Point two. And it's simply a table that's given based on some parameters of your CMU uh, member. We will say that uh, we're using S-type mortar and the direction of flexural tensile stress is parallel 
um, with the bed joints in running bond because we have a beam and then our tensile reinforcement is, is parallel in that beam. F prime R, or sorry, just FR, equal to 267 PSI. S sub N, we all know, we got our cross section, is just equal to B H squared over six, which gets us 2,928 inches cubed. MCR is equal to then 65.1 Kip feet. And that's after you divide by a thousand, you divide by 12. Make sure you keep all of your units consistent. It's very important throughout. And now if we take that and we get 1.3 MCR, that gets us 84.7 kip feet. And that's really the bread and butter, what we're looking for for this check. M sub N, not phi, uh, phi M sub N, just M sub N, which is equal to 185. 0.3 kip feet has to be greater than 1.3 MCR, which it definitely is. So we are okay, which means that our check is complete for minimum reinforcement. We are okay. And this check ultimately is to um, make sure that we stay away from brittle failure modes in the, uh, the masonry member that we're designing for lightly reinforced steel members. That's ultimately what this check boils down to. And in order to achieve this, the nominal flexural strength needs to be greater than 1.3 times the cracking moment strength. And that was just determined in laboratory testing through destructive you know, tests um, over countless amounts of samples and studies to determine that that's what it took in order to bypass uh, that failure mode. Simple as that. All right, let's check for maximum reinforcement. This is governed in the TMS in section 9.3.3.2. And first off, what they want you to do is determine the following. MU over VD times DV. And you need to make sure, or you just need to check and compare what this is, whether it's that, whether it's that, to 1.0. And then you go from there and follow the steps to make sure that you're, you're below these maximum reinforcement checks. But First off, we need to determine what this value is. So MU is easy, that we already know is 86 kip feet. VU, um, we would need to go back and you just need to run your, you know, your loading on top of your simply supported beam to get your end reactions where your VU would be, where your ultimate shear demand would be. But we're not gonna do that right now. But if you trust me enough, that gets you 34 kips. And that's factored, because um, this is, this is strength design. DV is the uh, total depth of the member. And we're gonna keep this in feet. So we're gonna make that four feet. Um, we plug all this in, MU over VU DV, uh, gets you 0.63, which is less than 1.0. If you're greater than 1.0, a lot more things start to happen. But if you're less than 1.0 per 9.3, 0.3, 0.2, 0.4, I know it sounds so dry, it's not the worst code in the world. I don't mind it that much. I haven't used it a lot, but through studying it, I, they did a pretty good job, I think. Um, they state that there's no uh, upper limit on reinforcement as long as this value is below 1.0. So there's no additional check. We know that we are just good as long as your capacity of your member exceeds the demand on your member. And it's as simple as that. We are okay. Before you leave, if you did learn something new, I'd appreciate a like down below, but you don't have to, you know, it's just like those pity likes that I, you know, I just gobble up. But seriously, if you did learn something, if you're feeling a little more confident about CMU, hit that like button. If I miss something, let me know, seriously, down below in the comments. I am studying this stuff right now for a test in October, and I need all of your help to let me know that. Um, and if you're still here and you're hanging out and you like the auditorium, you like the vibe going on here and you're learning something again, consider subscribing. Totally free, yada yada. Um, but seriously, I would love you here to learn more along with me in my journey to become a better stru uh, civil structural engineer. Without further ado, this is Rich with Team Kesteva and I will see you all next time. Later.